in cleaning the walker here, I'm not going to go through the little ugly things like what might happen if your screws are in too tight and you can't get those things out or maybe the uh, you've never taken the barrel off before and you're finding that's a challenge to do that. Uh, things like maybe the wedge, how that would, how you get that out if it didn't just um, pop out easily. Also the nipples here, if they've never been taken out before, uh, what you may have to do to get those those out. So we're just going to go through a basic um, you know, overall procedure of cleaning this gun and uh, disassemble and, and reassemble because we're going to get at the parts that are inside inside here and give them a, uh, a cleaning too. So I wanted to mention that before we get into the cleaning that um, it's not uh, totally going to cover every situation that you might have because I've cleaned this gun before and therefore I know that the screws and things are all loose enough so they'll come out. Like the screw down here right now I think is, I can actually turn that with my I can turn that with my fingernail, see? And that's too loose, and that you may end up losing that. If you tighten that one too much, your loading lever will, will pinch in there, and you won't be able to have a nice free movement like this one's got. So well, I'm thinking I'm going to tighten that up and then get, uh, get going with the cleaning video. Okay, we're tightening that one up. We found this one here was just a little bit loose. I mean, it was, it was about like... About like that, so never hurts to check your screws occasionally on the guns, make sure something isn't isn't working its way out. And of course, you can really wrench them things in there so they won't work out. Of course, then the problem becomes when you come to clean the gun, uh, it's not so easy sometimes to get them out either. So tight, not overly tight. I always thought we'd uh, show how I go ahead and clean the. Colt Walker here, or the, this is a Uberti actually, Colt replica of course. So first thing we just got done shooting it, and of course we're checking to make sure it's not loaded. We've done that already. And let's get our percussion caps cleaned off the nipples here. Could do that either um, now or after I break the gun apart. Uh, use the word break, it's not really a nice, um, nice term to use here. This one's being a little stubborn. Well, if we're not careful, we can scratch the living crap out of the nice uh, finish that you've already put on these. Okay, so that's done. And we're going to just give our wedge here a wrap. It usually sends them part way out. You know, pull the rest of the way out. Now the barrel's going to be a tight, kind of a tight fit on here. And you can use the, well, once this is cylinder's rotating, you can use the uh, loading lever here a little bit to uh, jar it loose if, if and hopefully that's all it'll take. I give this a kind of a quick wrap down there that took care of that. If not, you may have to build a wooden wedge and set that in between here and drive that in, but usually that'll take care of it. You can really get some force on this thing. You can actually bend these rods if you're not too careful there, so watch out for that. Okay, off comes the barrel and cylinders out. And then let's go into the next thing, what it's going to take to get into the actual parts inside here because, yeah, if you're going to shoot this gun again in the near future, you can probably just wipe things down here and, um, you know, and then clean out your chambers here, cylinder, get your barrel cleaned out, put things back together and go. But I'm going to take this all the way, all the way down uh, here. So it's important to have screwdrivers, of course, that fit. Um, Otherwise, you're going to mess up the nice looks of your screws here. So the first thing I'm going to do is lower the hammer and then get at these um, two screws to the rear. I want to loosen those up a little bit. Now, I've cleaned this gun before, so I don't have to be concerned about these things being too tight because I don't uh, put that much on them. If your screwdriver, by the way, is too wide in here, you're going to notch into that back strap there. So it's best to use one that fits. Of course, by fitting, I mean it doesn't have a V shape to the end of the screwdriver. It's actually flat on the end. This one's kind of V shaped, and I don't care too much for that. But I'm kind of cautious the way I do it. It is small enough in diameter, crossways, so that I don't um, get into the back strap, hopefully, unless I stoop it or and let it slip the one side of the screw. Okay, so that one, and then let's loosen this one up. Okay, and then we're going to go to the bottom. 
and catch this one down here. And I'll actually pull that one all the way out at this point. And I'm dropping these things into a cup then. I'm trying to stay away from the edge of my table because if I drop it onto that cement, it goes down to that crack. Um, I've got some real trouble in. Okay, that one's out. Now, the neat thing about these on the walkers, anyway, is that these screws here and the ones underneath the, the um, trigger guard are all the same. One, two, one, two, and three and four are the same. And then the bottom one here and this one here are also the same. So, and there'll be a shorter screw. Okay, I've got those screws out so we can just um, usually just slide this. You know, the bottom ones out. Just slide the um, wood here and the back strap off the gun, set that aside. And next battle is going to be to take off the trigger guard here. And we'll borrow a trick that I saw someone did on or do on YouTube where they're getting a couple of wrenches the right size here. And there's an actual tool for this, I believe, too, that you can, that maybe Walker had in their originals. But I'm going to cock the hammer back to, to um, move the spring down, pull the cock, and I'll see which one of these seems to fit the best. And this one will fit if I put a little more pressure on that one. And this one definitely is too small. The 5 8 is too small, 11 16 looks right. So let's do it without pulling the trigger. Let's set that on there and add a little more pressure to the hammer and let it go back. So a word of caution here because if that spring does come flying out of the wrench I could get damaged, lost. That's another good reason for wearing eye protection. There is an actual tool designed for the purpose. Guns of the West has a YouTube video showing how it's used. These tools are available from suppliers like Tracker the Wolf, Dixie Gun Works, or Taylors and Company. You know, in a pinch, I suppose a person could cut the handle off on the wrench or else make a tool something like the one that I made here. Now, if you're worried about the thing scratching the bottom of your uh, guard down there, which it may do, um, I've done it a couple times now and haven't seen any marks. As long as you don't get carried away with moving this uh, wrench back and forth, and by the way, if you do that, it's likely to come off of here. I'm a little concerned about that. Um, I'd rather have a... Uh, a tool here, it's a lot smaller and a lot lighter. I mean, by smaller, I mean shorter across here. It doesn't weigh as much. Having at the leverage point that I can mess up and, and bind it right off of there. Okay, so let's see if I'm getting lucky here. Um, now I can bring my hammer all the way back. Or I mean, kind of pull the trigger here and bring that up in because the, the uh, wrench here is taking the pressure from the, from the mainspring. Okay, we've got three screws to deal with underneath here. And again, since I've had this apart, these screws are not put on with um, some kind of a gorilla force. Danger, of course, of that is you shoot this thing too much and you can um, loosen those things up and they'll drop out on you. So there's one of the back ones. You see, those are all identical. So we've got no problem with those. Once I get this off, I'm kind of gripping it here to make sure it doesn't um, drop off. But I don't want it to. I should say one I don't want it to. Okay, now she should just slide right off. And like I say, we'll handle that with kid gloves and just kind of set that down out of our way over here for right now. And then we get to take this apart. Now, I'm using black MZ, so I'm not really getting much falling, and you might not get too much either. I shot, I don't know what, uh, seven, I suppose, 30, 35 rounds with this gun. I'm not seeing anything in there, but I'm going to take it apart anyway just to um, uh, clean those parts off. So what comes off next would be the what we call the um, bolt spring, combination bolt and, tr and trigger spring here. And again, I haven't got that... Um, screw in there that hard. If you do, you're going to need to use the right kind of um, uh, screwdrivers here to get on that thing, otherwise you, you just kind of mess up the 
the groove in there, but this one will come out pretty easy. All right, so that's coming out along with that the spring. We're doing our future oil pot. And we're going to bring out the next one, which would be the bolt, screw that holds the bolt in. And the bolt is the speller right here. I'll just use pry that up a little bit or work that out of there. There is some pressure on this because it's it's pushing alongside the trigger and it has a spring situation right here. And that's why that just kind of stays in there by itself. You've got to kind of pry it out. And the last one here would be the well not the last, but the trigger comes out next. That just dropped out. And last would be our hammer. And that one. And then you open that up and slide that down at the right angle because that's the angle that that hand is, the you know, channel for the hand is bored up in here. And that completes basic strip down of the, of the, uh, as we call it, the receiver or the basic frame here. And that's going in the oil pot. This is going to go in my hot water pot. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is bring the camera over here. And I'm going to end up getting some some hot water in that trough down there. And I use a coffee boiler to, to heat that up. So let's do that. I love that sound of a coffee pot. Any dogs or cats in the area, you're going to get them all excited with that noise. I want that water just hot enough so I can keep my hands in it. Um, but any cooler than that, well, it can be cooler, I guess, but I prefer it get as hot as I can and still keep my hands in it. That way it heats up the metal and the metal will dry quicker once you get it out of the, out of the water. Because I have an air compressor here that helps out. I think my water's about hot right now, so let's shut that off. I have an air compressor in the shop here and I'll use that. I can maybe show how that works, but yeah, it could have been a little warmer, but we'll live with the way it is right now. Okay, so the barrel goes in there and we've got a, a 45 caliber mop here that um, it looks really bad, but it's mostly carbon on there and there's nothing it comes off much. Let's see if this shows up on the camera or not. Yeah, basically. So we're going to basically run that through there a couple times. On a black MZ, I'm getting almost no noticeable um, crap coming out of there. I'll run a toothbrush here along the edge here. I don't want to forget to get in this section here where the Holding lever comes out of, and I also want to catch that center section, that pin the arbor that goes in there. Those arbors are tapered, and this hole in here is tapered. In case anyone was wondering, I have had a devil of a time getting this gun apart when it first came in from me, or for me. Okay, so that's pretty much what it takes for that. And um, I'll take it over to the air compressor and you know knock the water off of it. I don't know if I can see how that goes or not. Well, I can probably do it right here.
going to wipe this off now and get anything that stayed on it that the air compressor didn't get. Kind of get that off of there and then next step we're going to do is um, run a oily rag through the barrel. Let's see if we can get that on camera here. I'm going to stick a dab of oil on this thing. I'm just using a, a wire of a wire brush to hold my uh, cleaning rags and stuff with. Okay, so this is just going to go in there. Of course, it's not long enough for our 9 inch walker barrel, but we'll get it from both sides. Get some oil inside that barrel, and along with that, the arbor. And then um, the rest of it I won't show on camera. I think I'm just going to you know, oil this thing up, and, and that's pretty obvious. So the cylinder goes on the water trough. Let's see if I can tip that up so that you can, you can see what's going to go on here. Then we're back to our 45 mop. I'm just going to work that in and out of there a couple times. Don't want it to get that center either, so I'll catch that right now. Four, five, and six. I'm getting a little more um, black stuff you can see coming out of there because with our uh, lube and stuff, that tends to shove everything out, I'm hoping, out of the barrel. So that's where that goes. And here's our toothbrush. I'm going to catch these things, the grooves and stuff where the nipples are going in. Along with the nipple. Sometimes you don't get the back of these things and occasionally you've got to take those nipples actually out. It's always a good idea on a on a gun you get or a new gun especially to remove those nipples right off in the factory. I mean if nobody does that after about 6, 10, 20 years they are one bugger to get out. They can be tough enough the first time even. I've got a video I think where I kind of show how I how I, how I, what I do in the vise and stuff with the nipple wrench to get those out. Okay, that's got that. Let's put her back in. Let's run our mop through those one more time. Here's where the air compressor comes in really nice, I think. One of the places it does. You know, we can get the idea here. And we'll do a visual inspection do a visual inspection on these things. Now occasionally I'll add three or four drops of oil onto this rag thing here, but that's going to go in there and I'll hold the rag part and spin the cylinder. Um, everybody's got their own system here, but this has worked for me as long as I don't drop in the water trough. Normally I don't do this and I do a different spot, but with the camera set up, I'm going to just use it here. Hopefully it'll show up on the camera. So what I'm doing here is getting some oil inside those. We're not soaking it in there. Then we'll get the center section. I'll show you what I do on the, on the nipple ends in. Got our can of rim oil here. And we're just gonna give that a kind of a light spraying on this end. Well that's gonna definitely go down in there into the the nipples, so what we do then is grab our compressor. And we can knock off the extra oil, the extra oil off of there, and then do this. And that'll blow the holes clean. So um, other than wiping this whole thing down, my whole hands are greasy, oily right now, so I'm oiling that thing up. And that's done for the cylinder.
And the frame gets a bath. And here's where my water was starting to cool down quite a bit right now. I'd rather have it a little bit warmer yet. I've got a, I think this is like a 30, 38 size brush that fits in here, or a mop, I should say, fits in here pretty good. I get it in that channel there that the hand goes up into alongside of that, the back. Back here where the groove where the hammer drops into and catch the sides of this. You know, you just get what you can here. Toothbrush, catch this area. And then the, uh, you know, the arbor itself. Right back, but down in here now is kind of, on these walkers it's easier actually to get the crap cleaned out of the, or this crevice down in here than it is on some of the other ones. My toothbrushes I suppose fit there. You get the right size brush, makes a big difference. Q-tips, all I got left is this one right here. You know. So, that thing. Okay, I think we got her good enough right now. Let's grab our air compressor. Get our screw holes out. There's threads right inside these two here. And of course on the back side of this one. And also the back one too. So you want to get those out. And I will take a rag with this. Just kind of catch the rest of it. Visual examination. See that we got everything like we want it. And we'll oil this up too, but we won't do that right now. Don't forget about our hammer. Basically, the spots that get bad on this are right around your, your sight back here or the end of the hammer where it hits the percussion caps. We've got to get that done. Now, these do not have a roller like um, some of the hammers do back here, so there's no nothing to deal with there. Again, we're going to get that pretty much water mopped off it. These are warm enough and they'll dry pretty well just um, right after you wipe them off. And I think this is the last thing to catch at, to get after. That's that guard, and here again, you gotta, you got to watch that. I just don't want that to snap off of there. I mean, that's not going to be a good deal. I just want to get a... I suppose if it does go off, it'll be on film anyway, but... Catch that back side there a little bit. And dip it down in here. I'm going to kind of dissolve the salts. That would be corrosive on the thing. I'm just going to wipe this off a little bit, but I'm going to be careful here because... If I do it on camera and stuff, I may make a mistake. Push the wrong thing here. Maybe I'll use my air compressor there again. Okay. I've got a well used oily rag or some mopping thing here. I'm just going to go over the parts with that little bit. Sometimes I'll actually take the can of rim oil and you know spray into the inside parts here. And you can do that. I'll do that right now. Just hit it. Put it right in there a little bit. Another spot in there. Yeah, pretty much takes care of the barrel, the cylinder. We already did. That should be good to go, and then we're gonna do our frame here. We'll call it. I'm gonna hit that with a shot of the, of the rim oil. I'm putting that over the rag that I've got, so anything extra goes onto that. And I think that's good enough. Okay, so now it's time to put our parts back together. We've got these screws here, and we're going to dump some oil in there. I'm going to have to cover them, screw those down a bit. Dump the oil back, most all of it, until the parts start 
until the parts start to spill out. And we're going to dump these parts onto the rag and be really sure that we don't decide we need the rag for something else, grab onto that and put all the parts on the floor. And I've done close to that before. All right, the last thing to come out of this, if I remember right, was the, was the trigger here and the hand, which is this right here. So, okay, that's going to go up in the slot there. And you have a hard time sometimes getting this thing up in there. I know I did my clean this gun before. I forgot what trick I used on it, but it was something. I'll spend quite a bit of time trying to... See, I think what I've got going on here is that this is a little wide in the section here, and it's got to, got to pinch itself down. Maybe just plain forcing it, but see to me I used a... screwdriver or something in there and had to tweak that over. Did that go in? No, it didn't. I'm trying to do this without getting my head in the camera. All right, by some miracle, it decided to go in. Okay. Hammer screw, I guess we'll call it that. We'll tighten that, but not real, not real much. Hammer slides in. And next one I'm going in with is uh, is the bolt here. I know I took the trigger out; that would be the last thing. But I'm gonna, um, well, let's just put that one in and see what goes this time. See, the reason I don't do that is because it's got to sit on something. And if you just put it like this without the bolts, the bolt in there, it just flops down. You have a harder time getting the screw through it. So we're going to slide the bolt in there, and that's got to go. Got to be compressed a little bit to go on the on the inside of that um, the hammer that we got in there. So I think I got it in the right spot. You know, futz around with these things a little bit. Just take some time to get them there. I'm putting that bolt screw in there. I can see which way that bolt has to get moved. A little easier. Okay, there. Got that in there. So we're going to tighten that up. And trigger. Now it kind of sets on top of that. You can find the trigger screw. So over here. That's going through. You know, I'm pretty sure the camera isn't able to pick up details on this, but at least we got the order of things going on, correct? And Bolt spring, trigger spring. Push your trigger ahead and drop that on there. Find the appropriate screw. And if you haven't lost it, it be the short pillar here. started. I'm going to tighten that in with my larger screwdriver here. Wider, I should say. Okay, it's tight there. Check to make sure our trigger's working. 
See if our hammer slides back when what should be okay it does. Locks back like that, pull the trigger, she goes ahead. Alright. Next animal goes on is the part like I say, I'm gonna get some kind of a smaller thing here. I'm gonna make one that's doesn't have this 12 inch lever arm for it to mess things up. This is going in here, it's going on. I'm going to try to wedge that with my, my fingers. One of the screws that goes in. Once you get one of these things started then life's going to be easier. There's a lot of machine that goes on in these things. I have to give the folks that are building these things a lot of credit because well, any handgun, as far as that goes, or rifle, has a lot more to it than meets the eye initially. Shorter screw down here. I'll be relieved once that wrench is able to be removed, which will be pretty quick. Come on here, start on. There we go. I can put quite a bit of tension on these right now because they're in that spot, I didn't want to forget, leave one half loose. Okay, now what we need to do is bring our hammer back to the cock position, Miss Walker, like that. Setting back a little further, I should be able to take the wrench out. And then it will either stay cocked, and I'm going to grab this baby because I don't want my finger pinched like that. Okay, and then pull the trigger, lower hammer. Check to see this lined up, which it looks looks good this way. A little oil on that. Time for the grip. We could before we do that. Sometimes you know you don't need to all the time to get a little bit of oil back of the back strap there. So that goes down, line her up, get a screw, screw started. Get that one started, and then I'm going to start the bottom one because there is. Sometimes just a little bit of tweaking you gotta do on here to get that screw started. It's easier if them other two ain't ain't tight. So that one's just kind of coming in right now. Let me go to this side. And now I'm gonna tighten them up. Well at this time my hands got so much grease on them that oil and stuff that I can't. It's impossible to get them too tight because it'll just slip. That one's there. We got this one. I think we're getting pretty close. Half cock. Cylinder in. Okay, by this time my hands are, you know, I cannot shove this down hard enough to um Get to engage, and the barrel wedge will not go straight across like that because it's going to hit hit part of that um, arbor right now because there's too much of an opening right in here yet. You know, I'm going to do for that. You either grab onto your frame like this if you don't want to mess up your your butt here on some kind of hard surface. Grab onto your frame, and if I see this on camera, what I'm going to do is just wrap on that barrel with something like this wooden deal. Okay, I'm going to have to tip it. Let gravity help me out, out a bit here. Okay, I'm going to need another wrap or two. And there. Now this should just push through, which it does. Oh, and we're kind of done. off some of the excess oil. And she can be you know, checked 
out and put away.